a classic French bread, white interior, perfect crumb and texture. It doesn't have to be hard to have a great loaf of homemade bread. Let me show you how easy this is and why you're gonna be making this really soon. Growing up, this super easy French bread is one of the things I first learned to bake. It's because I also worked in a kitchen where I made this all the time. And it's a really delicious bread. It's really just a country loaf. We call it French bread because it has that shape and that style with some slashes, but it's super easy. It's great to use for sandwiches. It's great to use for croutons, make pizzas out of whatever you want. So what we're going to do is just start really with the base, which is super simple. We're going to start with some sugar. So sugar is kind of a way one to feed yeast. It also is a good way to balance flavors in bread. We're also then going to add some salt. So salt is needed in bread, especially because that's what actually brings out the flavor. You know, bread is a lot of flour. Flour doesn't have a lot of flavor. You need things that will actually bring on that flavor. So we have the salt and the sugar in there. Now we're gonna add some butter, just a small amount. But again, think of these layers of flavor we're adding. But what we also wanna make sure to notice is the butter is going to add a richness a little bit to it too. So we just wanna dissolve all that together. So we're gonna start, this is how a lot of classic kind of Midwestern bread start, is with some boiling water. And what the boiling water is gonna do, it's going to dissolve that sugar and the salt and the butter to kind of give us that good base to start with. So we're gonna put it right in there. I love making bread and I love how simple this is. So you just pour it in. You can stir it around or just let it sit for a few minutes and it's naturally going to just melt the butter, dissolve the sugar and the salt. So you just wanna let this mixture cool off somewhat only because when you put boiling water into it, that's way too hot for yeast. So I will even just stir it a little bit to cool it off or every so often just check the temperature. That's how you know. So if it's between like, I don't know, around 110 degrees is usually pretty good. 105, 110 or 100 to 110. If it's over 110, you start getting a little, the yeast, you don't wanna kill it. This is pretty much all it is except for flour and yeast. Now you're gonna notice the yeast I always use and all my recipes are always written for is instant dry yeast. I think it's super easy to use. What it is is a smaller granular of yeast and it's instant. It does not have to be bloomed in water. If you want to use traditional yeast, you can do that with that recipe, this recipe. You just want to save out a half a cup of warm water, not boiling, put your yeast in it, let it bloom, then move on like you would. Instead, what I do with instant yeast, which you can find at the grocery store in packets, super simple, is just put it in with the flour. That's why I love it. So this is how I grew up always baking was instant yeast. And I think, why would you not? Now also notice what I'm going to be doing is I am scooping my flour, which is almost like self-sifting, but also just make sure we're not packing it in. What I do is make sure to save out about the last cup. You'll get to see in bread recipes, and it's very normal. It will say like, you know, one to two cups of flour, whatever it is. That is because if you sometimes just add in too much flour, depending on the weather, the humidity, the time of year, that's too much and you don't wanna do that. So what you wanna do is save out about the last cup of flour always and put it in as needed. So I have my base amount of flour in there. I'm gonna add in my yeast, sprinkle it right over the top. And when you put it on the mixer, this is just like, to me, the easiest way. You don't have to use a mixer, you can do it by hand, but a mixer does take the work away. We're gonna finish it by hand because I think that is the best way to touch and feel and know what a dough should be like and not overwork it. So we're gonna turn it on, slow at first until it really works in the flour and then turn it up. So this has been mixing up and you can see that it's very still wet, very sticky, really sticking to the sides and bottom of the bowl. This is not ready, this is not smooth, this is not elastic. I have one cup of flour that I remember saved out, but I wanna make sure this works for a while before I just add the flour. Our tendency with bread is to just add in flour until it's smooth, but that actually usually ends up adding too much flour. What we need to do is develop gluten. We need the mixer to do some kneading for us first. So when it's at this point, I'm gonna actually keep the mixer going turn it up a bit and let it work until it starts pulling better away from the sides and becomes a little bit more smooth. So the dough still hasn't come together, but what I want you to see is it's starting to be more smooth, a little bit more elastic, pulling away a little bit, but obviously not holding a nice cohesive dough yet. That's just fine. That's why we have this extra flour here. But you wanna mix it all well in and you can see it's becoming nice and sticky and I like that. Look at that, what we're developing there. That's beautiful to have that stickiness. And what you're gonna notice is it scrapes from the sides pretty easily. That's important to note because it doesn't mean we need a ton more flour. We're gonna start adding this in, maybe a tablespoon or two at a time, and then let that work in. And we're just going to get a nice, smooth, cohesive dough ball. So this has been working now. You can see I've added, oh, probably about three quarter cup of that. And what it's starting to do is pull away from the sides well. It still is tacky, 
and that's important. Now, I don't wanna overwork it, but see how it's clinging to that dough hook? That's a beautiful spot to stop the mixer at. Mixers are wonderful. I love them, obviously, we all do. But they can tend to overwork breads, especially if you're not used to it, and you don't wanna overwork a bread. So I like to finish it by hand. So I'm gonna take some of my flour, still that reserved amount, just that final cup, put it here on a board, do it on your counter, do it on a board, whatever works for you, and then take this dough and just put it all out onto that. We're just gonna finish kneading it by hand. I think we kind of have gotten away from doing things by hand like this, but this is important when it comes to dough. One, this is the fun part. If you're gonna make bread, you wanna work with it because that is the best part of the dough, is to actually sit there and feel it. And this is how my mom or my grandma would say, you need to know the sound of the dough against the counter. So what we're gonna do is just with a very, very lightly floured surface, is just sit there and knead it. So it's rolling it back on itself, pushing it forward with the heel of your hand, and then turning it and doing the same thing. And what this is doing is slowly creating this beautiful cohesive mass. It's developing that gluten even further, and it's gonna slowly form our perfect dough ball. And you can see how quickly, even with just a small amount, see how it's just slightly holding to the counter or my board here, but then when I go and quickly move it, I'm able to work it up and it doesn't stick. Do you see the difference? That's when you know a dough has about the right amount of flour. You would have a little bit of tackiness where it kind of talks to the counter and makes a little bit of a noise, but if you quickly move it and knead it, it keeps working up easily. That's how you, to me, have a key of knowing I remember when my grandma would explain it to me, she would always say, you have to let the dough talk to you from the counter. And so you have to sit here and listen to it. And as you do, you're gonna start noticing a little noise, but that's what the noise is. It's that noise of it almost sticking a little bit, but as you pull up and quickly keep moving it, it's perfect. So as I do this, you can see it slowly is just coming together to be a beautiful, cohesive, smooth, mass with just a stitch of tackiness. That's beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is let it rise. Rising is super important when it comes to breads, yeasted breads. That's when it develops and when it really starts developing flavor. That's the important part about rising. You're, you're actually creating flavor. So I like to use a glass bowl so I can see what's going on. A Little bit of an oil that has no flavor. You don't want this to be a flavored oil because this is a very lightly flavored bread. So put it in with the nice side up but then turn it over, that just lightly oils it. Now we can cover it. So you can put this in a warm place till it's doubled in size. Now, if you're not used to this, don't do it. I like to turn my oven on the lowest setting for just a couple minutes till it gets a little bit of warmth in there, like under 100 degrees, 80 to like 95 degrees. Turn it off, then set this inside, and that warm environment will trap in the moisture in your oven, and it will slowly just let it rise quicker. So you can do whatever works for you, I'm gonna let it rise. We're gonna punch it down, form loaves. It'll be great. It has risen. Isn't it beautiful? I love dough. It's just a wonderful magic thing. Um, and now what we wanna do is actually punch it down, which is always hard at first, but it's kind of the most rewarding part is just to go in there and, ugh, oh, look at that, is it not satisfying? But what we're gonna do now is just turn it over on itself a few times. But what's amazing is during this first rise, you're gonna notice it's even easier to work with. It becomes even, look at that. Look how beautiful that is now to work with. I, ah, I love dough. So all I wanna do now is split it into two. You could weigh it. It's actually really smart to do because then you know you get two equal loaves or you could wing it. So I'm just gonna cut it, eyeball it, and you can kind of, you know what? You can go by weight of your hands if you want to. So now what we're gonna do is we have two loaves and we wanna just shape them. So I do have a little bit of flour, not a lot. We don't wanna add necessarily a lot of flour. We just wanna give ourselves a little bit here I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna roll it into a rectangle, almost like you would cinnamon rolls kind of thing. And we're gonna then just roll it in on itself. But do you see here how it has been sitting and rising? Look at that beautiful development of those bubbles. This dough, I think, is just a really simple one to work with. And what I like is breads a lot of times, I mean, we love those crusty artisan loaves, we love sourdoughs, but great starter breads are ones like this that are just, just simple. And you can see how easy it is. Now, if the dough springs back right away when you're trying to do this, it just needs to rest a little bit. So you could let it rest a few minutes before you do it. But you can see it's just pretty simply and pretty easily is able to let me do this. Now, the reason we're doing this, the reason we're rolling this out, then we're gonna roll it up. That's gonna create a great texture inside of these loaves of bread, these country style French loaves of bread. And that's what we want is good structure and good texture. So I'm just rolling it out enough that I'm getting those air bubbles out as we're going to. And now I'm just going to 
roll it up. It's really not anything special. We're just gonna tightly start taking that, coming back on itself, nothing special. Roll, and do you see how we're just sticking just a little bit? That's okay, don't be scared of that. And let it come all the way back until you have this nice tight little bundle. And we're gonna pick it up, and I wanna find that seam. I just wanna pinch that seam. So I'm gonna go in here, take that seam, pinch, 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 all the way across to make sure it stays together. You can do a hard pinch. With the ends, you kinda of just roll them back on themselves. See what I'm doing here? I'm pinching them, and we're gonna put all this to the bottom. If you feel like it got a little you know, crackly on top, just put a little bit of flour down. Don't feel bad doing that. And you can even just roll this a little bit just make it smooth. So we're making two loaves, so we'll do this two times. So with the first one, I'm just gonna put it right here on a parchment lined. I just put it on separate ones so they don't actually touch. That can be hard. But I'm gonna finish now up with my second one, and then we'll go through and do the final touches on these to make sure they have a nice shine and glisten to them and a few slash marks. So once they're both on their parchment lined baking sheets, take a beaten egg, I just beat it. And if your egg doesn't beat easily, just put a teaspoon or two of water with it and that will help it. We're just gonna brush them with an egg wash. It's gonna give them a nice shine and gloss once they're in the oven, which I really love. And we're gonna just put it all around. Make sure you get the sides because you will notice where you don't get egg. And then this is just for aesthetics if you want to. You can sprinkle on some sesame seeds. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I mean, they will add maybe a little flavor, a little texture, but it's just more for to kind of give it a little bit of definition. Looks, it's pretty, and I just like them. And we're gonna do some relief marks. Again, this is mostly for aesthetics. It is a dough that as it is in the oven, it will expand. So if you don't do these, it will most likely do it on its own. And so if you can pick where it happens, like we're doing right now, then you kind of control where those are. So now the thing is, just remember, a serrated knife to me always works a little bit better. That's just me personally, what I feel because it kind of goes through the dough. Do you see how easily it's just going through? And the number of them doesn't necessarily matter. I just like to make them even. We're gonna again let them rise. You can see they're already rising. As you open it, they open up. As you make that slash, they open up super easy. So we'll put them back, let them rise, let the oven preheat, bake them. We're gonna have bread soon. So I wanted you to see before I put them into the oven to do their actual bake, that they don't look too different, but you can tell they have risen. You can tell these cut marks are more open. You can even tell, if I turn this here, where I brushed the egg, this has now lifted up off of the parchment itself. So they do rise slightly, not quite doubled in size, but we're getting, you know, kind of to that, that look and that size. So now I'm gonna put them in the oven, I'm gonna let them bake fully till they're completely baked. And then we will cut into it and we'll try it. The bread has baked, it's still really warm out of the oven. Now, you know, there are the normal tells of thumping it, hearing it, looking at the bottom. Look at that beautiful bread. I like to take a temperature of bread. So for a softer bread like this, I get between 195, 200 for this one. Um, you know, when it's a crusty sourdough, you can go up to like 210, but on these, I like to stay around that 195, 200. Let them cool slightly, let them cool in a rack then so they don't get the moisture on the bottom and then they'll start kind of slumping or they'll get a little bit wrinkled if they only cool on the pan but then you're just ready to eat. What's great about this is you can use it for so many things, sandwiches and all that, of course, but it's also great to make into garlic bread. It's just that good home style bread. I don't know, you know, I grew up in the Midwest and so these are the things we had all the time. Look at that beautiful crumb from us just, you know, rolling it out, then rolling it up. Look at that bread. What you need is good salted, room temperature butter, the salt, in butter when it is a salted butter. I know for a lot of times with baking, we think we don't like to use it, which is fine. Um, that's a whole argument in itself. But when you're gonna have it with bread, if you're gonna have it with a meal, you want good butter. You want it to be salted so it has that flavor. Is there anything better? Mm. Mm. There is nothing like warm, fresh bread from the oven. Maybe you don't have a food memory of this. Growing up, whether I was at my grandma's, whether I was at home with mom, we didn't make bread all the time, but when she did, you were standing in that kitchen waiting until it was sliced because this is the moment. This is what you're waiting for. Now let's be honest. The first time you make bread, it's not gonna be perfect. For me, bread doesn't necessarily look perfect every time, but guess what? It tastes perfect every time. So what I hope you do with this, I hope you feel confident to make some bread. Make a good American French bread. It's that white classic bread with a great crumb and texture. Share this video around so other people can see and have the moments of fresh bread. We all need a moment like this in our day. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe. And until then, enjoy something delicious. If you're not, what are you doing?